Humans have always been explorers. From the first time our ancient ancestors walked out of Africa to the voyages across oceans and to the moon, we just can't help ourselves. If there are things out there to explore, you know we're going to get there. But you see, exploring space is a lot harder than just shoving off from the shore. It takes way more than just building boats. It takes a lot of thinking. Yet we've been able to travel through space for decades now. Even then, we're still at the very first stages of what the potential for space travel really is. But we might just be on the cusp of making it all a reality. NASA just announced they're working on a new creation, one that will change space travel forever. Join us as we dig deeper into NASA's new creation and how it's going to solve all of the hurdles of space travel. It's been over 50 years since Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took their historic first steps on the moon. And while everyone had their doubts at the time, there's no denying that the Apollo program had a lasting impact on our world. For a minute, let's talk about the space race, where it all began. The U.S. and the USSR were going head-to-head, -head, trying to outdo each other in space exploration. It was like a cosmic game of anything you can do, I can do better. And the U.S. clearly won. By spending a ton of cash on the Apollo program, the U.S. gained major bragging rights on the world stage. It was like a status symbol for the country. Yeah, we put a man on the moon. What have you done lately? But it wasn't just about political posturing. President Kennedy saw the Apollo program as a way to invest in advanced technology and create new opportunities for Americans. And boy, did it work. Over 400,000 Americans worked on the Apollo program at its peak. And let's not forget about the impact on our planet. The Apollo program may have been focused on the moon, but it had a ripple effect on Earth. During the Apollo years, we started to realize that our planet was precious and we needed to take care of it. Groups like Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace were established, and we started to pay attention to things like pollution and climate change. The things that we're studying in depth today all started with that one flight that the majority of the world thought we didn't even need. Thanks to the Apollo missions, we got to witness some truly motivational images of our planet from a distance of 384,000 kilometers away. One such image was the iconic Earthrise photo captured by the Apollo 8 crew in 1968. This photo really resonated with the public and gave us a new perspective on our planet, as a vulnerable oasis of life in the vastness of space. Even though at this point we didn't have the abundance of information about our galaxy that we do now, but it was still a glimpse that the Earth might just be one of a kind. But it wasn't just the Earthrise photo that changed our perspective. The famous blue marble photo taken by Harrison Schmidt in 1972 was another powerful image that made us see our planet in a whole new light. As William Anders, the Apollo lunar module pilot, famously said, we came all this way to explore the moon, and the most important thing is that we discovered the Earth. This quote makes a lot of sense, too, because if you think about it, the Apollo missions were more than just putting a man on the moon. They left a lasting impact on technology, inspiration, and culture. Thanks to the high-tech nature of the NASA Moon program, many practical products were developed that we still use today, like cordless drills, solar panels, and even thermal insulation. All of it stemmed from the one mission. Plus, the computer revolution of the 1970 to 2000 period was largely due to NASA's small, lightweight computer development for the Apollo spacecraft. Even space entrepreneurs like Richard Branson and Elon Musk have noted their own Apollo effect calling. The inspiration following the mission was something that you can't even calculate. Apollo's impact wasn't just technological. Culturally, the can-do attitude of NASA from the Apollo years is now respected worldwide. The human spaceflight adventure has become fascinating to young people, thanks to movies like Apollo 13 and First Man, making real space travelers new role models. We now also understand lunar cratering, and have clarified the cratering rates of Earth, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. We even discovered lunar mass cons, areas where the lunar mass is more concentrated, beneath lunar basins, originating from impacts 3.2 to 3.6 billion years ago. That's actual ancient history. But it's not just what the astronauts brought back that taught us something new. It's also what they left behind like laser reflectors that show the moon is slowly drifting away from Earth at a rate of about 4 centimeters per year. That was something we couldn't have possibly known before. And now, 
We're itching to go back to the moon. It's been a while since the last Apollo mission, but in the last couple of years, there's been a renewed interest across the world, thanks to water ice discoveries at the lunar poles. NASA is currently developing the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway Space Station with European, Japanese, and Canadian support. Landing missions may occur by the late 2020 OS, and former Vice President Mike Pence even called for a U.S. return to the moon as early as 2024. But let's be real here, it's going to take a bit longer than that. NASA thinks 2028 is a more realistic date, so in the next five years, we might just make a permanent home on the moon, too. That's not all, though. In the last ten years, we've made major waves with exploring the rest of our solar system and even the galaxies beyond. Mars and Venus being two of the main points of interest here. Now, while there have been probes sent to both of these planets, and with that, we've gotten some pretty important information, it all pales in comparison to the Apollo missions. Why? Well, because humans haven't yet been able to step foot onto these planets. Sure, there have been rovers and telescope imagining and really good imaging too, but until humans can actually get there, we can't make the same type of strides that NASA was able to make with the information we've gathered from the moon. So what's stopping humans from exploring space the same way we've explored the moon? A lot, actually. When it comes to space travel, the biggest obstacle is, you guessed it, gravity. If you want to get through gravity's hold, you need to be going at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour. Speeds that don't come easy. You see, going that fast isn't cheap. It cost almost $200 million just to launch the Mars Curiosity rover, and that's just a robot. Imagine the cost of sending actual human beings up there. One way to cut costs is by reducing the weight of the spacecraft. This can be done by using fancy materials like exotic metal alloys and fibered sheets. But even with the lightest materials, there's still a lot of stuff needed to keep astronauts alive up there. So what's the solution? Reusable rockets. The more times you can use a rocket, the cheaper it gets. Think of it like buying a water bottle. If you buy a new one every time you're thirsty, you'll be broke in no time. But if you buy one that you can refill, you'll save money in the long run. It's the same with rockets. SpaceX's Falcon 9 is a prime example of a reusable rocket. It's designed to be launched, landed, and then launched again. And as more and more rockets are reused, the cost of space travel will go down too, making it easier to invest in the rockets and multiplying space missions along with it. But this is just the first problem we're dealing with. There's a plethora of other issues too. One of the most basic ones is isolation. Being stuck in a small space with the same people for months or even years sounds like a nightmare to me. But for astronauts on a mission to explore space, it's just another day at the office. And well, that office is not exactly spacious, even in space. On Earth, we're used to having everything we need at our fingertips. Need to order food? There's an app for that. Want to catch up with your friends? Just shoot them a text. But in space, it's a whole different story. The lack of connection with the outside world can lead to some serious behavioral issues, but that's not all. Sleep loss, work overload, and circadian desynchronization can compound the issue and lead to even more problems. That's why NASA is developing methods for monitoring behavioral health and working on adapting tools and technologies to help astronauts cope. Research is being conducted on everything from workload and performance to light therapy for circadian alignment. Because let's face it, no one wants a sleep-deprived astronaut accidentally pushing the wrong button and sending the spacecraft into a black hole. There are just too many variables here, all of which just get worse and worse as time goes on. Add to that the fact that you're just stuck in a spacecraft the entire time and things start to feel a lot worse. Let's paint a picture here. Going to space is a bit like camping, but instead of being surrounded by trees and critters, you're surrounded by the cold, unforgiving vacuum of space. So if you're going to survive in this hostile environment, you're going to need a cozy and comfy spacecraft to call home. NASA knows that if astronauts are going to spend months or even years floating in the void of space, they're going to need a few things to make their living quarters bearable. They need to make sure everything is just right. Temperature, pressure, lighting, noise, and space all need to be just so. But living in a spacecraft is more than just finding the perfect living conditions. There's also the issue of keeping everything clean and healthy. 
When you're in a closed environment, everything you do affects everyone else on board, including the germs you bring with you. That's why NASA is constantly monitoring the air quality, water supply, and even the microorganisms living on astronauts' bodies. And if you think that's gross, just wait until you hear about the recycling. In space, nothing goes to waste. That's right, even your pee and poop are valuable resources. Everything from oxygen to water to carbon dioxide gets recycled, so the astronauts have everything they need to survive. It's like living in a closed-loop ecosystem where everything is connected and nothing is wasted. All of that can be hard to manage, but considering the astronauts can't just make it back to Earth every time there's an issue, right? That's not just because they're in space. One of the biggest challenges is how slow our spacecraft are. It's not just a matter of patience. Rockets are massive and require a ton of force to move them. Chemical propellants can only give us an initial push, and then it's all coasting from there for years. For example, Mars is roughly 140 million miles from Earth. That's like driving around the entire planet 5,600 times. And instead of a quick jaunt to the moon, we're talking about a three-year journey. That's longer than most college degrees. On top of the distance, there's the issue of self-sufficiency. Astronauts on the International Space Station can rely on frequent resupply missions and a quick return to Earth in case of emergencies. But when you're headed to Mars, there's no turning back once you burn your engines. You're on your own for the entire trip, with no resupply or rescue mission to fall back on. And let's not forget about communication delays. When you're that far away from Earth, it can take anywhere from 20 minutes to up to an entire day for a message to travel one way. That means astronauts have to be prepared to face any situation without the support of their team back on Earth. All of these issues build on top of one another and make it extremely difficult for humans to make it close enough to the planets to gather quality information that would take things here on Earth to the next level. But NASA is here to potentially fix everything. They're developing a brand new engine called the helical engine that's supposed to defy the laws of physics entirely. The engine uses a groundbreaking technology known as a helicon plasma thruster, which allows it to accelerate ions to very high speeds, producing a powerful thrust that can be used to propel spacecraft through space. It operates by generating a magnetic field that ionizes gas, producing a plasma. The plasma is then accelerated through a magnetic nozzle, creating thrust. What makes this engine so remarkable is that it is incredibly efficient using only a fraction of the fuel that traditional chemical engines use. This means that spacecraft using this engine can travel further and faster than ever before, all while using significantly less fuel, solving one of the main problems with space travel right there. The reduced fuel consumption also means that spacecraft can carry more payload, which is crucial for space exploration and research. The potential applications of this engine are vast, ranging from scientific exploration to commercial space travel. With its increased efficiency and reduced costs, it could open up new frontiers in space exploration and make space travel more accessible to a wider range of people. For scientific exploration, the engine could be used to send spacecraft to the outer reaches of our solar system, allowing us to study distant planets and asteroids in greater detail. It could also be used for missions to study the sun, which could help us better understand solar activity and its impact on our planet. In addition to scientific exploration, the engine could also be used for commercial space travel. With its ability to travel further and faster than traditional engines, it could drastically reduce the time and cost of space travel. This could make space tourism a more viable and affordable option for many people, allowing them to experience the wonders of space firsthand. Not only that, but the engine could also have important military applications. With its increased efficiency and reduced fuel consumption, it could be used to power unmanned drones and satellites, allowing for more effective and longer-lasting surveillance and reconnaissance missions. The development of this engine represents a major breakthrough in space technology. Its increased efficiency and reduced fuel consumption have the potential to change the way we explore and travel through space forever. If you had the opportunity to hop on a rocket with this engine on the way to Mars, would you? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one.